Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am delighted to be joined by Meredith Elliott Powell. How are you doing, Meredith? I'm doing great. Excited to be here. Excellent. And I'm here in a uh, sunny San Diego. And you are where today? I am actually in Fairfax, Virginia, where the uh, leaves have changed and fall has come. Yeah, you know, well, I, I actually lived in Northern Virginia for a time, okay. and uh, yeah, it's a it's a great it's a beautiful time of year when the leaves change. The only downside of it is uh, you spend half your life raking up leaves. <laughs> <laughs> so, so true. Yeah. Um, so uh, those of you who don't know Meredith, Meredith, she is one of the top fifteen business growth es- experts, uh, named by Currency Fair, highly acclaimed business growth expert, one of the top motivational speakers and a best-selling author. And today we're going to talk about the book she released uh, this year, which is called The Best Sa- the best Sales Book Ever. The Best Leader, um, let me just get the title properly. Uh, Cut Through the Sales Obstacles and Send Sales Through the Roof. Okay, so that's quite, uh, that, that's quite a title. So um, <laughs> let's talk about, what we, first of all, tell me, what was the genesis of the book? And then we'll go into some of the topics that you covered. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. You, talked on, you, you touched on both the pieces there. It's a, um, it's a sales book and you flip it over and it's a sales leadership book. But mm-hmm. really, you know, the genesis of the book and the reason for it is my co-author and I, Connie Podesta, we're sitting around and talking about, you know, salespeople are just overwhelmed. There's so much mm-hmm. to do as a salesperson. And here you come with all these experts and gurus giving you more stuff to do. So we wanted to write a book that was about what you need to quit doing, what we could actually take off your to-do list and really get you focused on the things that really do book business. Yeah. And I I love that concept because I do think that people are overwhelmed. And I do think that we have succumbed to this idea, like everybody always says, Oh, you know, busier than we've ever been. And I always say, are we though? Are we, or are we just more distracted than we've ever been? Are there more things to distract us? And that's why I love, um, you, you, are, you have a first section here, beliefs that destroy sales potential. So what are some of those beliefs that are undermining your ability to execute? Well, you know, the very first thing is that, you know, the fact that how many salespeople are out there blaming the economy or blaming their territory or blaming their product or service. And, you know, we just want to cut through that excuse that if you are struggling to sell, it's you, it's not the economy, it's not the product, it's not the territory, and it's not the customer. Now, some of those things you may have to make some shifts and changes in, but it's disempowering to blame everything else and very empowering to start pulling it back to you and what you need to fix. Yeah, well, you know, as you know, it's, it's very tempting and it's very comfortable to look externally and find lots and lots of reasons why things aren't going your way. It's a lot harder to you know, take a good hard look at yourself and say, am I doing everything I can to, to overcome this? And let's face it, good economy, bad economy, somebody's selling, right? Somebody's so selling. So why can't it be you? You know, which really leads to, I mean, one of the one of the biggest things that I think that salespeople need to quit doing is refusing to change. I mean, John, you've got to bump into this all the time. You know, we, as salespeople, I don't know, we came up with this methodology of how to sell sometime around the, you know, the stone age. And yeah. so many of us are afraid to change it. And when you think about the fact that everything about this marketplace is different, you've got to be willing to change. Yeah, I know 100%. And, and uh, obviously, buyers keep changing. And I think that here's the, what I was finding the interesting thing is that we're all consumers and we're all buyers, right? Uh, and every salesperson is a consumer and a buyer themselves. But when they suddenly put on their sales hat, they forget about what it's like to be a buyer, right? And they forget that their whole buying habits have changed. And so they have to, uh, they have to progress and change in order to meet the, uh, meet the, the needs of buyers. But I actually think salespeople are more relevant than ever because I think just as we said, salespeople are overwhelmed. Buyers are overwhelmed too. I mean, that is, I think that, um, you know, I I never bought into this idea that the salesperson's position will go away. Mm -hmm. And I do, I think it's more important and it's more valuable than it's ever been for exactly why you're saying. I mean, the consumer may be in charge. They may be able to buy anything with a click of a button, but they are overwhelmed. They need somebody to help them understand how to make the best decision, how to be productive with the decision they make, how to service it after the sale. Salespeople have never been more important than in this economy. 
Yeah, and I think you get rewarded nowadays because, as I said, buyers are overwhelmed and you'll get rewarded if you help buyers cut through the noise and actually understand. So you've had, you have a fantastic opportunity. But I love also you've got another um, section on assumptions. And I love that because I do think we're all so guilty of that. We make so many assumptions uh, throughout the course of a day or whatever, often based on absolute zero evidence. Yeah, the um, my favorite assumption is, um, you know, my passion, my favorite part of sale, more than anything, the sale happens in the follow up. And that um, the assumption that customers aren't interested because they don't get back to you is one of the biggest mistakes that salespeople make. I mean, you know, we were talking about the fact that people are busier than ever. And if you know, you and I could have a great conversation and then I'm ready to buy. But as soon as you walk out of my office or hang up the phone, my mother falls and breaks her hip. Right. My best client has, you know, has issues. We decide to expand the business. Life is just so busy these days that it's easy for us to fall off as type of, as top priority. So we cannot assume that people aren't interested. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And it is. And I think we do fall into that trap of just thinking, well, I had a great conversation with Meredith. She seemed all anxious to, to buy. And now I can't uh, get a hold of her. So obviously, she's changed her mind. When, as you say, you may just got distracted by a bunch of other things. And then how many times have you heard somebody like a buyer actually say to a seller saying, Look, I'm really glad you persisted because you know, a lot of stuff came in the way, but it, but it's still a, it's still important for me. So I'm really glad you stuck and were persistent because now I'm in the position to move on it. Oh, that that is so true. I just spoke at an event a couple of weeks ago where honestly I followed up with her for two years, and when I got off stage, um, the the keynote was different than the actual one I had right. begun started to picture but she said you know all it's thank you so much for staying in the game because the timing was perfect and i really do believe that that it you know that it just really happens there and you can't assume that people aren't interested and another one is that drives me crazy is sales can't assume they don't need marketing because in today's business they need marketing they do and i think that uh, and i think that that age-old kind of sales marketing kind of conflict just needs to go away because both of them need each other and yeah sales absolutely needs marketing and i think to some degree uh the this whole you know inbound thing has has undermined a lot because it, we've created this again and marketing is almost to blame for but it could created this illusion that they could just bring all these leads in and then sales were sitting there going okay bring us all these leads and reality is it's never that straightforward or so no, it, it, it really isn't. And there's um, marketing can't do its job without the data and information from sales. And sales can't be allowed to focus on what they're really good at if they're trying to do what marketing needs to do for them. Yeah. And then you have a section on sales traits that annoy everyone. And I have to say, the first one just jumps out at me because it's, uh, it's a bit of a pet peeve of mine. But I love this, quit trying to befriend your customers. <laughs> You know, it's um, uh, I'm up here in Virginia doing a speaking engagement, and one thing I was talking about today is the importance of reading a customer before you try to sell to them. And one of mm -hmm. my pet peeves is the fact that we all go to sales training, and sales training for exactly how we sold for and get op with them and work for us. It just isn't good for them. And so you, this whole idea that this is going to be your best friend and your buddy, you're not, you're there to be a resource, some you can help them take their business to the next level. If a friendship comes, okay, but that's not the goal. Yeah, I, and I 100% and I agree. I mean, you're there to help them. You're there to have a professional. You're there to problem solve with them, become a resource for them. And as you say, if you become a friend to them, great. But it always used to, when I used to interview a lot of salespeople for sales positions, that's the one thing that used to drive me crazy when people would say, my customers are my friends. My cus All my customers become your friends. And I would say, well, I'd like them just to become customers and happy customers. And if they become your friends, that's fine. But first and foremost, I want them to be happy customers and the right kind of customers. I, I, I totally, I totally agree. Yeah. And I, I mean, there's a bunch more in, in that section that we could uh, dig into. So I highly, uh, I highly recommend people to read it because um, I mean, this one of the one I just pick out because it's another kind of a soapbox of mine, but self-awareness, right? 
I, I just think that self-awareness, I think, is the one thing that holds so many people back from fulfilling their potential. And becoming self-aware is not the easiest thing in the world, and it takes some painful introspection sometimes. But boy, if you can do it, it can really like turbocharge your career and your life in general. I, I totally agree. And, you know, I think that it always mattered and it was always important. But now that we're living in a marketplace where it really, the product is not what people are buying. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can buy whatever you sell at, um, in a million other places. So the only reason they're doing business with you is because they know you, they like you, and they trust you. And if you are not self-aware enough if you don't know what's going on if you're not if you don't understand your weaknesses your you know your strengths then you're not going to be able to really build and form those relationships and if you're not self-aware you're certainly not aware of what the customer is thinking or feeling either yeah no absolutely and it's interesting now because as you say you know, uh, products and services are very interchangeable especially nowadays i mean we could look at we could point internally ourselves into situations where we were leveraging one technology and then another one came out that was maybe just as good maybe slightly cheaper maybe had a feature that we thought was better and we switched because we had no relationship with the vendor yes. and so it yep. just became and that's why we work very hard on you know relationships and, and you know having that extra customer experience and service and all of that because yeah if you just if you don't build that relationship you're you're very replaceable nowadays Absolutely. And everybody on your team needs to realize that they are in sales now. I don't care what position they hold. Mm -hmm. They just got labeled a salesperson because they are. Everybody has to be so aware that at every touch point, that customer experience needs to be great. Yeah. And then you have a part about negotiating tactics, right? And obviously, you know, people, people do hold like, uh, you know, sessions on just how to close and all of this, but, but yet, I mean, the reality is we know is your, your closing is part of the whole sales process. It's not really a section unto itself. It may, it may be the end of the sale is where the sale gets closed, but closing isn't really something discreet, right? I don't, I don't think so at all. I mean, I think that um, I don't really believe in the closing tactics of, of closing the sale. I think it, if you didn't start the sale correctly, if you didn't, if you didn't build empathy, if you didn't discover correctly, if you're not solving the right problem, I don't care what kind of ninja closing class you've <laughs> gone to, it, it isn't going to help. I, to me, a close ought to be natural. Mm -hmm. And the only way that can happen is if you have done your work all the way through the process, right? Absolutely. You've, uh, done, it all, you've done it right all the way through. And there's one interesting one that just sticks out for me is, uh, is the refusing to walk away. Yeah. Uh, I like that. Uh, so explain why, why should you always have that in your back pocket? You know, the, the, um, the truth is that with, I mean, again, this is one of these mistakes I think that salespeople make, you know, we're so competitive and we want to win. So, um, so, so often we, um, we stay with a customer far longer than we ought to stay with a customer. And you're selling from a place of weakness when you do that rather than a place of, um, of power. And we, when you say yes to following up with a customer and staying in a relationship with a customer, you're saying no to other opportunities. Mm -hmm. And, and you've got to realize if that relationship, it's, you know, if you've got to work too hard, it's not a good relationship. I mean, this is about productivity, efficiency. It's not good for the customer and it's not good for you. So understanding when to walk away is very important uh, from a sales professional standpoint. Yeah, because at the end of the day is you really want every, uh, it should be a win-win. It should be a win-win um, situation. It should be you should be meeting the customer as an equal, not as a sub, not in a subservient position. As, and as you say, if you just keep giving and giving and giving, at some point you've just relegated yourself and you've just, you've just minimized your own value, right? Yeah, and I think the funny thing is that the moment you decide to walk away, the, the, the power shifts and sometimes mm -hmm. the customer just starts to come around, you know, it's kind of like dating, John, you know, <laughs> the, you know, if, if I, if I had a million dates, I couldn't, you know, I, I, I'd have a million more. If I didn't have a date, I couldn't get one. And so right. the moment that you say to somebody, I'm not going to do that for that or, you know, but I also think I was just um, working on my own sales pipeline today and I was really taking people out of it that I'm not going to mm -hmm. follow up with anymore because I need to make room for other people. And when I'm chasing a lead that isn't going to pay my price, who isn't bought into my product, who's going to beat right. me up, I don't make room for somebody who'd be really powerful. 
Yeah, and no, ex exactly. And that, that's a classic uh, mistake that people make. And I think that's uh, doing a pipeline review like that on a regular basis is something that sales people and sales managers need to do because you can get very complacent when you look at your pipeline and say, well, I've got lots of opportunities in here. But if you look really closely and then you go, well, I don't actually. <laughs> and then sometimes it, it's better to have fewer that are more targeted, more, you know, your target customer, more chance of you uh, closing them to have lots of garbage, as you say, that you're going to end up wasting time on. Yeah, and I think we are living kind of, hence the reason we wrote the book, What You Needed to Quit Doing, was we're living in a time where you can't waste time. It's so hard to close a sale these days. I mean, it's the the it just takes longer. You've got to be working as productively as you can possibly work. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more because I think uh, I think people are still still relatively cautious as buyers. I mean, they've never really come back since the financial crisis. Uh, you know, that kind of reticence is still there. So you do have to work harder, particularly against the, the kind of no decision. Yeah, I think that everybody's now everybody's just waiting for the ball to drop. And I also think the customers they have some opportunity. If I don't buy it, hey, it will be there, oh, I can purchase it. So I, I just think we'll just don't you know spend and buy it the whole use of option. Excellent. All right. Well, we're up against the end of our time now, um, and Meredith. Uh, if you would just like to tell the uh, the, the listeners, the viewers, a little bit more about yourself and your company and how they can learn more about you. John, this is Meredith Elliott Powell again, and you can find me. I really invite people to connect with me. You can find me on my website at valuespeaker.com, valuespeaker.com, and of course on all the social media sites. Um, I do a lot of videos on YouTube. You can find my blogs and my articles and tons of free resources. Excellent. Uh, listen, thanks, Meredith. And again, the you know, the book, I highly, uh, I highly recommend you check it out. The best sales book ever cut through the obstacles and send sales through the roof. And then if you flip it over, it's a sales management book, which is quite clever as well. So there you go. No excuses, both sides of the coin covered. Uh, great uh, talking with you, Meredith. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.